What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. This one is going to be on the teams that you should be using if you want the best chance of winning a game of Madden. Whether you're playing online head-to-head, -head, you know, offline at a tournament, or just against some friends, if you want to win and have the best chance of winning, you should use one of these teams. Now, I'm on the Saints as much as I'd love to put my beloved Saints on my top five. Unfortunately, they just miss it by a little bit. They're still a great team, though, so I just wanted to give them a little shout-out. But the first team is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. So they're going to come in at number five on my list. And the Chiefs, really, offensively, they might have one of the best offenses in the game, in my opinion. You could easily argue they have the best offense. Uh, Mahomes, even though he's only 77 overall, 80 speed, good mobility. Uh, you see that 88 agility, 87 acceleration, so very good mobility out of the pocket. Absolute cannon for an arm, 97 throw power, can make any throw in the game. 83 short, 78 medium, 78 deep. His accuracy is honestly not that bad. I've played a decent amount of games with the Chiefs, and he hasn't really, you know, made any completely awful throws he has made some mistakes you know thrown on the run he might overthrow a receiver or something but for the most part his accuracy has not been a problem for me so you know as long as he's accurate that 97 throw power is a cannon and then he's mobile so I have had zero problems with him so far but halfback moving down the list halfback you have Kareem Hunt obviously a great back some decent backups as well <laughs> 479 overall running backs so you're very deep in the backfield. You don't have to worry about relying on one guy to be your workhorse. Uh, fullback, you know, doesn't really matter too much. Anthony Shervin, 75 overall, one of the better fullbacks in the game. Wide receiver, an absolute ton of speed. You know, 98 speed, 92 speed, 93 speed. Chris Conley, Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins. About as good as a trio of receivers as you'll see probably in the game. And then that combined, along with 95 overall, Travis Kelsey, is why I'm saying that you could easily argue they have the best offense in Madden 19. Absolutely, you know, just a ton of receivers and a ton of weapons on the offensive side of the ball to work with. Offensive line, they're about average, uh, maybe a little below average. Their right side is a little stronger than their left side. Uh, that's something you'll see a lot. A lot of teams will have, you know, two or three decent linemen and then two, you know, weak spots. Uh, so the Chiefs are no different there. Defensively, they kind of fell off a little bit. They were kind of been known uh, as more of a defensive team in the past, but this year, you know, Chris Jones is a solid defensive end. You'll have Justin Houston, who you want to be rushing the passer. Uh, he's only 29 years old. It feels like he's been in the league for 15 years. That's pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, so you have a decent defensive line, defensive tackle. They're a little weak. 74 overall, Xavier Williams is their best bet there. Um, and then linebacker, you know, they don't have, you know, like Tamba Ali and Derek Johnson of the past. Uh, you know, those guys have gotten older, moved on. Now they have some younger guys. So you're working with guys like Anthony Hitchens, Reggie Raglan, in Aligwe. I might have pronounced that incorrectly. But you have a little bit of speed. You know, Aligwe, 85 speed. O'Daniel is a guy I like to use her, 85 speed. You also have D4 at 85 speed. So you have a little speed to work with, if nothing else. You know, if, if you know, they don't have the overall that you might like, at least you're able to get some speed on the field and they can try and make a play for you. In the defensive backfield, you know, they lost Marcus Peters. So they're kind of coming in, rebuilding a little bit. Kendall Fuller and David Amerson are decent as your outside cornerbacks. And then Steven Nelson, Keith Reeser, you know, I would probably put in Traymond Smith if I'm running something like a dollar where I have four defenders on the field, four corners. I'd probably move Smith up, and I'd rather that three plus three speed over the two overall difference. Free safety is where they really hurt. Uh, obviously, strong safety. They have Eric Berry, one of the best in the game. So defensively, you can see they're just not as good as they've been in the past. But if you can get past their defensive deficiencies and look on the offensive side of the ball, uh, you'll see that you know if you can basically survive with their defense, you'll be just fine on offense. So that's why they're coming in at number five on my list. So at number four on the list, we have the New England Patriots. So the Patriots... You know, a team that doesn't get a ton of Madden love, even though they're so good in real life, because of the fact that they haven't had a ton of speed in the past, and then Brady, being the most accurate QB on the game, he just doesn't have the wheels. You see the 61 speed this year. You know, mobile QBs aren't, you know, they're still very good, obviously, but a lot of people put QB spies on the field this year because spies are so good as a zone and against the pass that it's kind of, you know, brought the value of mobile QBs down a little bit since everybody has a spy. And so now pocket passers are a little better in my opinion. So you have the best pocket passer in the game, a stable of running backs. You know, I like to go with James White and Sony Michelle. Uh, White is really good out the backfield, just like in real life at catching the ball. Michelle's pretty good at everything. 
Um, fullback, James Devlin, 76 overall. Like Sherman, one of the best in the game. Receiver, so like I said, they now have some speed. So they got Dorsett, I believe it was last year. Cordero Patterson comes over in free agency, 91 speed. So you have some speed there. Chris Hogan, 88 speed, not super fast, but he's that guy who's out there. He's going to make a lot of catches for you. And then 88 speed, you know, isn't just awful. He's not slow as molasses like somebody like Edelman or Larry Fitzgerald, who's 83 speed. Uh, He can still, you know, create some separation. So they have a good trio now. Gronkowski, obviously, best tight end in the game. You know, Kelsey's probably the only one that's up there with him. Uh, Kelsey's a little faster, but Gronk's just going to make pretty much every single catch. And then they also brought over Will Ty with 87 speed. So I like that for double tight end sets. You have some speed from that second tight end. You don't have to roll with, you know, Dwayne Allen or Jacob Hollister, who doesn't have quite as good of hands. Uh, On the offensive line, you know, kind of like the Chiefs, they're better than the Chiefs, definitely, but uh, they're pretty solid all the way around. Uh, They only have, let's see, one left guard who's not in the 80s. Everybody else is in the low 80s. So although they don't have any standouts, they're also not just completely awful. So they have a solid offensive line. Defensively, they're very good as well, in my opinion. Uh, You have two guys, Trey Flowers and Adrian Claiborne, who are going to get after the quarterback. Danny Shelton, Malcolm Brown, good defensive tackle depth, even Lawrence Guy. And then at linebacker, you have Hightower, obviously. 85 overalls come down a little bit over the past few years, maybe, but he could definitely improve that as the season goes on if he has a good year. Uh, he's been injured a lot. And then aside from Hightower, they don't have anybody who's really high overall-wise, but they have a ton of speed. So you have a Landon Roberts, 85 speed, Lange, 84. You come down here, Marquise Flowers, 86, Grigsby, 87, and Brandon King, 6 foot 2, 89 speed. So you have some great user options there, and you just have a lot of versatility. So their linebackers, even though the overalls might not be super high, are better than what they at first appear. In the defensive backfield, McCordy and Gilmore, you know, McCordy coming over from the Titans, Gilmore, Jonathan Jones, they have a guy 95 speed. They also have another 95 speed corner, Keon Crossan, I believe is how you say it. So if I were to go with a dollar setup and have four corners on the field, I'd probably want Crossan and Jones as my two slot cornerbacks on both sides. You want that speed uh, if you're manning them up or a lot of people send the DB fire two blitz and are blitzing those corners. So in that case, you want the speed to get to the quarterback. So they have a really good defensive backfield safety. Obviously, McCourty still there, still one of the best free safeties in the game. And then Patrick Chung, although he might be a little slow, has his seemed fine for me so far. If you want three more speed, Deron Harmon's a great guy you can sub in. Might even have better coverage skills as well. So it just kind of depends what you're looking for there. But this year, the Patriots very well-rounded. They easily could have been higher up on this list, in my opinion. It was tough to kind of grade these top four teams. I'd say the Chiefs were firmly at number five for me. Um, But the top four, really, I could see arguments being made all the way around. All right, so entering the top three here, we have the Los Angeles Rams. Jared Goff at quarterback, similar to Mahomes, big arm. A little more accurate, a little less athletic, but like I said, you know, he gets the job done. He has enough speed to where if your opponent isn't respecting him and putting a spot on the field, he can get out and make him pay. And so he has that that dual threat that'll force your opponent to make adjustments to account for him. Obviously, halfback Todd Gurley, one of the best halfbacks in the game, just a workhorse, 92 speed, can truck as well, can catch out the backfield, can do it all. Uh, So there's not much to say there. Receivers, they have a great trio. So Brandon Cooks, you have that one guy. I like to have that one guy who can burn. So if you've noticed, you know, Tyree Kill, Philip Dorsett, now Brandon Cooks, 95 speed, bam. Robert Woods, 91 speed. Cup, 87 speed, 80 overall, more of that possession type of receiver. So you have a speedster, a kind of tweener, and then more of a possession guy. So it's a fine trio. Tight end, a little weaker than the other two teams, obviously, with Gronk and Kelsey, but 77 overall, 85 speed, Gerald Everett, not bad. Just depends how much you use your tight end. If you run a very tight end centric offense, then you know obviously the other teams are going to be a little higher up on your list. Offensive line is actually pretty good. Your your left side of the line, Whitworth 88, Saffold 80, and then you have 78, 71, 79. So the left side a little stronger than the right side, but the right side isn't completely awful other than that right guard is a weak spot. Um, But, you know, I would say they're average to above average in terms of offensive lines in the game. And defensively, obviously, is where they got their major overhaul and is why a lot of people are going to be using this team. Michael Brockers, 88. Aaron Donald, one of the few 99 overalls in the game. They picked up Sue, 94 overall. Linebacker, they're a little weak, but they have the speed. Much like the Patriots, you have Mark Barron, 86 speed. You have Samson Ubakum, 86 speed. So you have a lot of speed there. You don't really 
want to rely on them too much to be making plays. Uh, the Rams are a team that if you're running like a 3-4, they might not be ideal for you to have that many linebackers on the field. But if you're running something like a dollar or even a 3-3-5 and can get away with only three guys on the field, uh, then you can have Mark Barron, you know, Samson Ubakum, and you could throw out, you know, somebody else like Corey Littleton or even if you want some more speed, you know, Bryce Hager. So you can get away, like I said, having that speed is at least a consolation prize for not having that high overall. Uh, the, the defensive backfield is fantastic. They picked up both Marcus Peters and Aqib Tlaib this year in free agency, two top-tier cornerbacks. Uh, Nickel Roby Coleman, very, very uh, fitting name in terms of him being the Nickelback, and his first name is pretty much Nickel. Uh, so 82 overall, 89 speed, great there. Torian Nixon I like to put in for the dollar if you go four DBs. Uh, 93 speed is good coming off that edge. And then obviously at safety, you have LaMarcus Joyner, one of the best free safeties in the game. And then John Johnson, the third, 85 overall strong safety. You know, one of probably one of the top uh, maybe five or seven strong safeties in the game, I would say, was a rookie last year, had a really good year. So defensively, I mean, you're set. I would say they have the best defense on the game, pretty much bar none. Other than the Jacksonville Jaguars, I would say it's the only other comparison. And then offensively, you know, they're serviceable. They have a lot of weapons now. And you could easily make an argument for them being the best team on the game. At number two here, I just referenced them, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And man, it was really tough ranking the Jags versus the Rams. Very, very, very slight edge to the Jags in my opinion here. Uh, Blake Bortles, like I mentioned with Mahomes and Goff, you know, the inaccuracy hasn't been a problem for me. 79 speed is enough to get that mobility and force your opponent to basically have to pay attention to him and can't just completely dis disregard him scrambling from the pocket. So you can force them to respect the fact that you can take off and make them put a spy on the field. But, you know, I know Bortles is like a meme in real life because of his real life performance but in the game 80 overall his accuracy isn't awful I haven't had many cases of him making bad or inaccurate throws in terms of overthrowing or underthrowing guys he's played just fine for me so I really he was my biggest doubt coming into using the Jaguars and really I haven't had any problems with him but other than him obviously you have Fournette who's an absolute beast 92 speed can truck as well Corey Grant, 96 speed, so that's a nice changeup, a guy you can get in a lot of different areas on the field and make your opponent pay if they're not paying attention to that. Wide receiver, they have a complete stable. They have four guys, or at least five guys, I would say, that you could logically use. These three are the ones that I like to go with. I like to go with Westbrook, Moncrief, and Chark. I like the speed. So 92, 93, 94 speed. That's the reason Chark's up there. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to have at least one guy who's kind of a burner. Chark's that guy for me on this team. And he makes a lot of really good catches despite the 72 overall. And then I go with Moncrief and Westbrook. They also have good hands and can catch. Marquise Lee and Keenan Cole, or Keelan Cole rather, are both very good receivers. If you like more possession guys, then I would definitely recommend go with Lee over somebody like a Chark or maybe even a Moncrief. Um, but just for me, I prefer the speed. Tight end, ASJ, 86 speed, and Niles Paul, 87 speed. So you don't get much blocking from them, but in terms of receiving tight ends, you can do some great things in two tight end sets, and then just for three wide, one halfback, one tight end, the most popular personnel, ASJ has been a fine tight end for me. On the offensive line, you know, they're kind of like a lot of other teams, like I mentioned, you know, really strong at left guard and center, and then really weak everywhere else, you know, 73 overall, 71, 78. So they have two really good offensive linemen and then three very mediocre ones. So like I said, it's a theme that you're going to see. Defensively, like I said, they're the only team that matches up to the Rams, in my opinion. Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, Dante Fowler, just a fantastic pass rush. DT, you have Malik Jackson and Marcel Darius. So the defensive line is just completely stacked. You basically have more talent than you really know what to do with when you're out there playing with them. And then at linebacker, really all you need is Miles Jack and Telvin Smith. I mean, 88 speed, 87 speed, 83 overall, 90 overall. But they have an absolute ton of speed along with Donald Payne, 86, Lamar, or Leon Jacobs, 88 speed. So that's four guys over 86 speed as linebackers. But I run a lot of 3-3-5 personnel, and so a lot of times I'll go with Miles Jack and Telvin Smith, and then I'll use her, either Donald Payne or Leon Jacobs. Or if I want to rush that third linebacker, then sometimes I'll sub in Dante Fowler if I want a little more pass rush. So they're just very, very versatile on the defensive side of the ball. Cornerback, Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye, the best duo of corners in the game bar none. Uh, past them, they're a little bit weak, but they do have Jalen Myrick, who has 96 speed, so that's very nice for coming off the edge. I usually put him in above Hayden in terms of when I go with three cornerbacks. 
Uh, at safety, you have Deshaun Gibson and Barry Church, who, you know, aren't the fastest of safeties, but they have decent overall, pretty solid coverage skills, and I haven't had much problems with them, you know, getting beat or getting absolutely just burned. Uh, Church is a little slow, like I said, but he hits pretty hard, so that's, you know, a good compensation for the lack of speed. But I haven't really had any problems with, you know, my safety so far. But like I said, the defense, the defense rather, in my opinion, best in the game. Offense is sneaky good as well because a lot of people discount Blake Bortles, but he plays pretty well in Madden 19. And aside from him, they have a lot of speed. So Jaguars coming in number two on my list. And at the top of the list, a lot of you guys probably could have guessed it, the Atlanta Falcons, just the most balanced team. Matt Ryan, 89 overall, 72 speed. So he doesn't have quite as much speed as I would like, but... He has more speed than someone like Brady, so he can still get loose if they don't have a spy. It's just a little harder, not as much athleticism, but in terms of accuracy, he's very, very accurate. He's not really going to make any bad throws if he's not under pressure. Uh, if he is under pressure, he'll still make a lot of the throws that you want him to make, so one of the top-tier options at quarterback in the game. The halfbacks, you know, might be the best duo of halfbacks in the game, probably is. Uh, maybe other than Kamara and Ingram, you might like that combo a little better. I'm a Saints fan, so I might be a little biased. Uh, but Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman, as good of a duo as it gets in the game. At receiver, the trio of Julio, Calvin, and then a lot of people play Sanu, but I like to go with Marvin Hall. And I'll say a lot of more casual players will play Sanu, but a lot of other guys I've seen playing Hall because of the speed. Like, I, you know, if you've caught on to anything, speed is king this year in Madden 19 so you want that speed on the field so 92 speed 93 speed 93 speed I mean Julio might be the best player in the game in terms of on regular teams though the other one I would consider would be Tyree Kill honestly with the 98 speed he's such a problem on regular teams but Julio just makes insane catches um and he's just gonna get open against man to man every time and you know he's Julio so that's that tight end um you know Hooper's all right I would like a little bit of, of a faster tight end, but 8 overall is not bad. Offensive line is actually pretty good. Uh, you know, only one guy in the 70s, Alex Mack being a 90, or actually two guys in the 70s, my bad. So 79, 75, and then Alex Mack being a 90 is pretty good. And then you have an 81 and an 83 on the outside. So probably a little bit of an above average offensive line because at least their 70 overall guys aren't in the low 70s like a lot of other teams, and they do have some studs. Defensively, uh, just a lot of speed, a lot of options on the defensive line as well. Vic Beasley on one side, Tack McKinley and Brooks Reed on the other. Uh, Tack McKinley is going to give you a little bit of a better pass rush and a little more athleticism. So if you want him to rush the passer or if you want to drop him into a spy, I would recommend going with McKinley. If you want more of a run stuffer uh, and, you know, it's a third or fourth and short, Brooks Reed is more of your guy for those types of situations. Defensive tackle, Grady Jarrett's a great guy. Uh, linebackers, like I said, with the Jaguars and even the Patriots, just a ton of speed. Devondre Campbell, 85. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this guy's name, but six foot two, 90 speed linebacker. Obviously, you have Deion Jones in the middle, 91 overall and 89 speed. So pretty rare to see a guy with the combination of that speed and that overall rating. And then Duke Riley, even though he's only 71 overall, still 86 speed. So you just have a lot of versatility and a lot of speed at linebacker with this team. Corners, Trufant, Alford, uh, even Brian Poole, you know, a little slower than I would like my nickel guy to be, but he's serviceable. Trufant and Alford's one of the best duos in the game. And then don't sleep on the fact that this year, so they have Ricardo Allen at free safety and Keanu Neal at strong safety, but they brought in Ron Parker as a free agent. And so he's their backup strong safety right now. But if you're running a four defensive back, like dollar set or big dime, whatever it might be, you want to have Ron Parker on the field uh, as one of those fourth corners. He's 78 overall as a corner, 90 speed. He's going to be a better option, in my opinion, than either Isaiah Oliver or any of their other corners, Justin Bethel, Blighty Ware Wilson, uh, whoever it might be. So be sure to get Ron Parker on the field in those types of scenarios. But as you can see, the Falcons just very, very balanced. Don't really have any weaknesses. They have an elite backfield duo, elite receiver core, elite quarterback, you know, an above average offensive line, elite linebackers, elite secondary, I would say. And then even their pass rush is above average, if not elite. So just a very, very well overallly rounded team. Their biggest weakness is probably tight end and Austin Hooper, and even that's serviceable. So Falcons coming in at number one on my list. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. If I had to say the next few teams that just missed the list, I would say probably you have teams like the Saints, the Chargers, the Vikings um, are, are three of the main ones that come to mind immediately. 
um, maybe maybe a team like the Panthers, you know, maybe a team like the Texans or the Titans, you know, they have some some versatile players. Uh, but in my opinion, probably the top three would probably be something like the Eagles, the Saints, and the Chargers would probably be my next three teams. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, take it easy.